This is Ken Lathrop from Coffee Crafters, and we're here today with another episode of the Friday Show, and we're going to be talking about how coffee is decaffeinated. Because I really, I heard a few things about it and understood that they use some chemicals and some processes that weren't chemicals, but basically here's the short story on how it's decaffeinated. About 10% of coffee drinkers out there prefer decaffeinated. It's not something I'd put in my mouth personally, but um, you know, some people definitely want to do that. So basically one of the things to remember about decaffeinating coffee is all the processes have one thing in common. They all use water in some form because caffeine is water soluble. So it bonds with the water molecules and you know, so it can be soaked in water to get rid of the caffeine, but then you have to actually get the caffeine out of there. There are two basic types of decaffeination. They're solvent based and non-solvent based. There are two basic types of solvent that are used uh, to decaffeinate coffee. One of them is methylene chloride and the other one is ethyl acetate. Now ethyl acetate sounds really bad, but it's also one of the compounds that's found naturally in ripening fruit. So if you ever look on a pack of coffee and you see something that says naturally decaffeinated, it's coffee that was uh, decaffeinated in ethyl acetate. Now, that's not the whole story behind it because actually they don't take naturally occurring ethyl acetate to decaffeinate coffee because it would be too expensive. So it's actually made out of a petroleum product, but because it has the same name, they call it a, a natural process. So the first type of um, solvent based is a process is a non-direct solvent based. And what that means is they will soak coffee beans in hot water for about two hours and it's almost boiling water and because that caffeine is soluble all of the water and also the flavor compounds will come out into the water and now you got a bean with no flavor compounds and no uh, caffeine that gets pumped into another tank then they add the um, they add the solvent to that and the solvent bonds to the uh, molecules of the caffeine that's evaporated off and then you have the flavor compounds in the water that's put back in the beans then and then the beans soak up those flavor compounds and now you have it when you dry it decaffeinated coffee that way. The other solvent base is a direct solvent base and what happens with that is they actually steam the coffee beans for about two hours to open up all the pores and then they keep bathing those coffee beans in the solvent for about 10 hours um, and then they they uh, dissipate all of the caffeine uh, through evaporation. Uh, so that's basically how the solvent-based process works. Now one of the things people are saying, well, Jesus, you're putting in this solvent compound, you know, is that really bad for us? Well, actually, this is one of the cases where that chemical probably doesn't hurt you. Um, it evaporates like at 104 degrees, it's gonna be gone, right? So they get almost all of it. There might be a few traces out, but when you actually roast that coffee, you're gonna get it up to 400 degrees, and any traces of that solvent are gonna be gone. And even after the roasting, then you're going to brew it in coffee at 200 degrees. So that's not a big deal. It might have some questions about the flavor that you get left behind, but it's probably not going to hurt you. Um, so the non-solvent based processes, there's one that we've all heard of lately, you know, the Swiss water process is probably my, my favorite. And the way the Swiss water process works is they will soak coffee beans in hot water to dissolve the caffeine. And now we've got all that caffeine and those flavor components in the water. And they run it through a charcoal, a carbon filter. And they will filter out the caffeine. It bonds with the molecules of the caffeine. And then the, the uh, flavor infused water goes into another tank. And that's the tank that they use to charge the next batch of Swiss water process. They throw the first batch away of beans. And then they will use that to then keep drawing out the caffeine out of the other ones. And then it, the beans stay infused with the flavor because it's got a lot of it in there. They filter it back through the carbon and keep that process going. That's also where you get green coffee extract is through that process of Swiss water process. The other uh, non-solvent based process is CO2. So they will actually soak the beans in hot water in a stainless steel tank. And then they will pump in liquid uh, CO2 under a thousand psi of pressure and that pressurized CO2 will suck the caffeine out of the bean and then they will let the pressure off and the CO2 uh, bonded to the caffeine then goes off, deposits the caffeine, the CO2 goes back into a tank um, and that's the process. They mostly use the CO2 process for high volume in commercial decaffeinated coffee. 
So why is it so difficult to get a good cup of decaffeinated coffee? Well, think about what happens. You're drawing all those flavors, like a thousand flavor compounds. You're drawing those all out of the bean, and then you have to put them back in by soaking it, so it's never the same again. And those of us roasters who roast uh, decaffeinated coffee know that it's very difficult to roast because we've now disrupted the chemistry of that bean. We've opened up those pores for the caffeine to get out and it's never the same, which is why there's so little time between first crack and over roasting that decaffeinated coffee bean. So that's why it's difficult for us to roast it and it's also difficult to get the flavor compounds back in because you're actually taking the flavor out and then trying to put it back in um, through osmosis. So. So that's the scoop, that's kind of how uh, decaffeinated coffee is made.